Good morning, Christ Center. It is Tuesday, October 31st, and we are in week eight of our journey through the book of John. Let's take a moment and invite the Holy Spirit to join us. Hi, this is Katie Felix, and today's reading is from John 11, 17 through 44. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here, and he's calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on an account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. So today is the last day of October, which means Thanksgiving is just around the corner. And I love Thanksgiving. I, I love this whole season, but I especially love Thanksgiving. Uh, I love playing games with my kids. I, I love watching football in the afternoon and watching Elf at night. Yeah, Elf has become our, our Thanksgiving night tradition. But my my favorite part, I mean, besides the you know, general being thankful together, is the food. And when I'm cutting the turkey just before Thanksgiving dinner, I can't help myself, you guys. I can't wait. I want to dive into that turkey. So so I slip little pieces, and, and everyone notices, but I don't care. I, I want a foretaste of this dinner. Lazarus, in this chapter, got a foretaste of something all of us will get one day. He tasted resurrection. I, I'm sure people asked him about it for the rest of his life, which might have been quite annoying. He, he became something of a celebrity right after it happened. In fact, when he marched into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and, and everybody was cheering for, for Jesus, they were also there, John tells us, to get a glimpse of him, of, of, of Lazarus, the man formerly known as dead. But even this miracle, as, as mind-blowing as it was, was temporary. 
In fact, when they heard about his resurrection, the religious leaders had already decided they would try to kill him and get rid of the evidence. As far as we know, they were unsuccessful, but Lazarus eventually went on to die again. Unless there was some chariot of fire waiting for him in Bethany that we don't know about. Lazarus died. The resurrection that he received in this chapter was only temporary. And you know, we could actually say the same thing about all the signs Jesus did. They, they had a shelf life. He calmed the Sea of Galilee, but more storms came. And the people that he healed would one day contract new diseases. They, they would still die. Miracles were never an end in themselves. They, they brought great joy, yes. They removed suffering, yes. But they were never permanent. So if Jesus was just extending the inevitable, what was the point in performing these signs? Let me tell you what I think. I think he wanted to give us a foretaste of the life to come. The life John himself would tell us about in the book of Revelation chapter 21. Here's what it says. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain for the former things have passed away. Lazarus, you guys got a taste of new life that day, and so did everyone else. A funeral turned into a fiesta, and one day all of our funerals will expire and, and we'll, we'll join another party, the wedding supper of the Lamb, and this one will never end. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the new creation that is coming. We, we thank you that our, our tear-drenched, disease-infested, and war-torn world, as beautiful as it is, we thank you that it will one day be made new. And we remember that today. You are making all things new. Amen.